Today, we are here to celebrate a 60th anniversary, grateful for a commitment that has endured, a commitment that has certainly required faithfulness, sacrifice, and dedication. And we give thanks for the blessing of longevity given to Monsignor Tosti in order that we might be here today to mark such a milestone. We cannot let such an occasion go unnoticed, most especially because admittedly, now we live in a culture that mistakenly and to its detriment devalues such commitment and perseverance. Indeed, although this is an anniversary of priestly ordination rather than of marriage, which we are perhaps much more accustomed to celebrating, there are similarities in the two, and that for us as Catholic people, these are both sacraments of vocation, of divine calling, understood to be lifelong commitments. And so we must honor those priests and married couples who keep their promises across the decades and intend to do so right to the end. But there is one rather obvious difference between the 60th anniversary of a priest and that of many married couples, in that there aren't any children or grandchildren with whom to celebrate because celibacy is the price a man is asked to pay in order to serve Jesus Christ and his church wholeheartedly. And those who embrace it for the sake of his gospel and for his people are deprived of that great consolation that there will be those left behind to carry on their name and their family traditions at the end of life's day. But before any jump to the conclusion, as they might be tempted to be, that celibacy is somehow unnecessary and of little value, we have before us that beautiful second reading today in which we are reminded that God is promising a new heaven and a new earth and telling us that it is for that kingdom rather than for this world that we are being invited to live. It will only be in God's kingdom, not this world, that there will be no more death or mourning. So as people of faith, we are invited to trust that we are destined to live on there. Thus, it is not necessary for us to leave descendants behind us in this world, nor to be overly concerned that somehow our names live on after us, but rather to be concerned only that our names be written in that book of life that God holds for all eternity. This is a truth that escapes many as it runs counter to conventional wisdom, but it is a truth that the voluntarily celibate, thus childless, priest or consecrated religious are asked to bear witness to by their very lives. It is a great sacrifice, yes, but a fruitful one if made and kept out of love for Jesus Christ and his church, a commitment that frees those who make it from the joyous but weighty commitments to spouse and children, so as to be available to love and serve the family of God that is the church that much more fully. Indeed, it is not the path of life most chosen. And in this present day culture, and in the face of recent scandal, sadly, it's a path less and less chosen. 
Yet it is a path that truly can make a profound difference in the lives of those who will walk it with Jesus Christ and in the lives of those whom they are sent to serve in his name. It is the path of love, though many who do not understand love as Jesus teaches it might be prone to judge the lives of priests and consecrated religious as doomed to lovelessness and loneliness, but they couldn't be more mistaken. In today's gospel, chosen for the whole church today, yet providentially so appropriate to this celebration, Christ asks his followers to love one another, but the hitch is to love them as he has loved us. Well, we must appreciate that Christ's love is not primarily an emotion as so many might understand love. Rather, it is a conscious decision to do whatever one is called to do regardless of the cost to oneself for the good of others in his name. This is the lay down your life kind of love epitomized by the cross of Jesus Christ that more than romantic love even spouses in Christian marriage are asked to learn to live over a lifetime, a love for one another and for their children that is unconditional. But priests and consecrated religious are asked to live that kind of love for God's people, his church. Some 68 years ago now, a then very young man from Taunton, feeling the tug of this kind of sacrificial love, made a decision to discern and prepare for this kind of life by entering the seminary and pursuing studies for the priesthood. Being an only child and thus an only son, his sacrifice would require a great sacrifice of his parents as well, who would have no hope of future grandchildren, but who out of great love were willing to make that sacrifice and give their son as ever their wholehearted support. Sixty years ago, Tony and Norma Tosti were filled with pride and gratitude as they were privileged to witness Bishop Conley impose hands on the head of their son, Ronald Anthony, ordaining him a priest forever. We are here today because that then young man, a man with great intelligence, numerous talents, and great motivation, and thus the potential to succeed at just about anything else he might have attempted in life, decided instead to devote his entire life to Jesus Christ and his church as priest. Indeed, we are here all these years later, but truly we might not have been here today and literally not have been in this particular parish church if Ronald Tosti, priest and pastor, had not gathered this community and led its founding members in building for themselves the most worthy of houses for their worship. This very parish and this very church complex stand and will continue to do so as testimony to Monsignor Tosti's faith and his pastoral zeal. Yet as monumental as this parish and its complex may be, these are merely a concrete reflection of a far, far more reaching, but perhaps less enduringly visible effort and the accomplishments he has made in forming and building up the living stones of the church who are its people.
by the innumerable masses celebrated, homilies preached, confessions heard, marriages officiated, anointings performed, funerals conducted, classes taught, and persons counseled across six decades of priesthood. Not surprisingly, that pastoral zeal and care continues now even in Monsignor's retirement among his fellow residents of Maplewood at Mayflower Place. If pressed, those who know Monsignor Tosti best might have to admit that he does like to gamble a bit. <laughs> But what he might bet at a casino now and then is truly nothing as compared to that great gamble he took over 60 years ago now when he decided to bet his entire life on a mystery, the Paschal mystery, that central mystery of our faith that assures us that if we are willing to lose our life for Christ, we will gain it. Indeed, if we are willing to die with Christ, we will rise with him. So to embrace this mystery, he abandoned any plans for whatever future he might have known to become a priest. And today we celebrate with gratitude the abundant fruits of that great sacrifice made and that promise kept for six decades. And we see and personally feel the countless blessings that have been a consequence of him responding to such a unique and still very noble call. And we happily join Monsignor in prayers of thanksgiving to God today that he has been preserved in health of mind and body such that he can be here to celebrate this Mass with us and for us today. And certainly, although Tony and Norma, Frank and Irene, Jimmy, Sharon, Cousin Nello, and so very many others who do celebrate this occasion with us, but from a different and maybe not so distant vantage point, will welcome the day when he is home again with them. Yet we who are blessed by his presence as priestly father and friend pray that he will be remaining among us for some time to come. So Ron, as we congratulate you and share your joy on this, the 60th anniversary of your priestly ordination, we must all admit you've come far and you've accomplished much. And while you can slow down a bit now, as you might. You can't quit. You are a priest forever who is called to continue to inspire, guide, and bless us by your example of faithfulness, your wisdom, and your pastoral love. So carry on and persevere to the end.